You know, let, let's transition this into Epstein right now, actually. Go so, right ahead, sir. So the Bilderberg Group, you know, comes out in 1954, largely the brainchild of David Rockefeller. Now, David Rockefeller was military intelligence prior to this. Um, you know, that's why he kind of gets the, uh, that arm of the Rockefeller family. You know, the Rockefeller family's pretty large, but as far as uh, be, uh, a guy that can get people together, can buy politicians, people of influence, or at least get them in a room, David Rockefeller's absolutely that guy. So in 1972... And this is actually something I learned researching Epstein, and I'm going to get to, to why in a moment. In 1972, he's on a plane with Zbigniew Brzezinski, the father of Mika Brzezinski from Morning Joe, um, you know, an advisor to uh, Jimmy Carter. He's largely credited for arming and funding bin Laden's Mujahideen network against the Russians. He's bragged about it. He was an advisor to the Obama administration and campaign in the early days. You know, a big power player, another globalist that goes to all these things. And David Rockefeller saying, you know, the board at Bilderberg won't let me bring in the Japanese elite and we have to expand there, you know, because we want to also expand into China, something that Kissinger had wanted to do and something we're seeing the fruition of now uh, you know, when there are supposed competitor, but Google's playing both sides, all of big business is playing both sides, et cetera, et cetera. So they're on a plane and they're like, what are we going to do? We'll start the Trilateral Commission. Now, the Trilateral Commission is a lot more public, uh, in a sense, than the Bilderberg Group, but they still really don't tell you what goes on behind closed doors and it's a heavy hitter place. Jeffrey Epstein ends up from now my research at least being a member of the Trilateral Commission, even though we really don't know who his clients were, what mo money he was moving, or what his purpose was, from 1995 until almost 2008. So now you've got a multi-billionaire serial pedophile who has intelligence connections that date back to the 80s to people like Adnan Khashoggi, arms dealer for Iran-Contra, and you have him in the think tank world at the Trilateral Commission and even the CFR, uh, you know, partnering up with his buddy uh, Larry Summers, and all the connections we can go from there. It's really incredible. I mean, this guy, when they find a passport, uh, when they raid just one mansion, remember this is one place, where in the 80s he has an alias... OK, he, he's got a residence in Saudi Arabia. He's got stamps in France, uh, Saudi Arabia. Uh, I believe it was Spain and uh, somewhere else. But uh, it's it's incredible. I mean, we're talking about, you know, a lot of people are like, Jason, you're kind of overdoing it on your channel with Epstein. I'm like, you don't understand. This is the network. Uh, this is the Iran Contra network. This is the 9-11 network. This is how they operate. They operate with guys like this. You know, it's not, it's not a coincidence that Dennis Hassert was also labeled a serial pedophile by a judge just a couple years ago, yet he's never been prosecuted on any child abuse charges, and he's currently out of jail, and he's still currently in a suit against one of his accusers. It's unbelievable. Oh, that's what these people are about in, 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 large, in, in a large way, man, and that's, that's the crazy part of it, and that's why we should... Um, investigate in that route, right? But I think Epstein, and I think you feel the same way. I've, I've seen what you've done. He is the front man uh, right now. They're, they're feeding him to us, throwing him to the wolves. There are a lot deeper connections that go on because the, the, the network, as you, as you said, is, is very deep and very extensive. Uh, Ghislaine Maxwell and, of course, uh, her father and onward and upward. You just keep going and going. Mm -hmm. But who is Adnan Khashoggi? Now, l listen, let me let me tell you this, right, because yep. we asked that question and uh, people are like uh, well, a lot of people that do this type of investigations and this type of research. Are like, well, don't you, everybody knows who Adnan Khashoggi is? And uh, I'll just give it to you from my perspective. I had no idea who the hell Adnan <laughs> Khashoggi was up, <laughs> up until like two months ago. Right yeah. now, I knew who Jamal Khashoggi was. Yep. Right. And I knew who he was because the media put him out there. Yep. Because he got, you know, we know the whole story behind him. He got, he was killed and uh, they, they were accusing the Saudi prince of doing it and the whole deal. And they made it seem a very, uh, benign is the wrong word, but they didn't give you half of what Jamal Khashoggi actually was. They made you, they made him look, at least from my perspective, they made him look as a regular guy. 
you know, that was a journalist that, you know, he was fighting the good fight and got caught up and now he's dead. Far from that. Far from that. And then you get into Adnan Khashoggi and I started researching him. He's a billionaire. He did a lifestyles of the rich and famous running, running guns. Who is this guy? Yeah. So he's a Saudi billionaire and he facilitated that original Iran Contra network. Too many people simplify what actually went on there. I'm going to try to lay it down in the simplest of terms, but show you how this is an international intelligence network and has been for some time. That's why you can't point a finger at one group. So let's just look at this one. How did this happen and how is Khashoggi involved? So the United States needs to run guns to the, the Contras in South America. How do they do it? Well... They use their asset, Khashoggi, probably through the Central Intelligence Agency, although it's never been proven, uh, to get uh, guns from Poland and Czechoslovakia. And then to run them through the Mossad in Israel, okay, so Khashoggi makes the deal with those guns to the Israelis, who then ship them down to the Contras. Now, instead of us taking money for the guns from the Contras, we ship up cocaine, and then we sell it on the black market, and all the money is run through the BCCI banking network that's also connected to the Bin Laden network. So that's how that works. Now, if Epstein was an intelligence officer in this era and he was doing deals for Khashoggi, who is an arms dealer, it wouldn't uh, be so far-fetched to say that maybe he was involved in Prince Andrew's arms deals because one of the things they don't like to talk about Prince Andrew, even though he's accused of pedophilia along with Epstein and he's his good buddy, is that he's the royal family's arms dealer. That's mm. what he does. Okay? That's how these connections work. And Khashoggi uh, more than likely had intelligence connections. You have to understand, although you have... For, for instance, a very real U.S.-Israeli-Saudi alliance against things like Yemen, Syria, and uh, trying to take over that region, that doesn't mean they won't stab each other in the back. You know, that doesn't mean they won't get a uh, position and go rogue and cut somebody up in a room and then deny it and cause an international incident. That's, yeah. that's how this works, you know. Uh, it's not like they're all friendly all the time. They're friendly when they, it's in their own interests. Do you think this is like a giant, what we're seeing right now is, is a giant like struggle amongst the elite? Like that's what it looks like to me. And, and we're sitting back uh, and to get into the left right paradigm thing, we're sitting back picking sides, you know, like, oh, not us per se, but just the general public. They try to defend the Bill Clinton connections because they're fans of Bill Clinton or they're Democrats and that's what they subscribe to. Or they try to defend Donald Trump because of the same reasons. Right. Yep. We're sitting here picking sides in a war that's not doesn't include us. And it's definitely not meant for us to win because we're not e we're not even players in this war in the first place. Mm -hmm. Does this make any sense to you? I don't get it. You know, and that's one of the reasons I feel so good about coming back, man, because, as you know, it's never been about left or right to me. In fact, I did an entire broadcast earlier today, too, actually, in a series of broadcasts I'm doing about the Black Book of Epstein and the donations of Epstein to let everybody know he bought both sides. He worked with both sides. That's how this work works. There was a relationship with Bill Clinton, a rather large one, and there was a relationship with Trump, a rather large one. To deny that and be ignorant of it and play team baseball is only doing yourself a mental disservice of in-your-face cognitive dissonance, and it belongs yeah. no place in this. Like you just said, do you think they care about you if you're making... Twenty thousand, fifty thousand, even a hundred thousand dollars a year. Hey, you could be clear, clearing five, ten million, and guess what? These people at the top, they look at you like an ant, like everybody else. These are the big boys. When they talk about the point uh, or the one percent, I had a big problem with that. I was thinking, listen, it ain't the one percent. I mean, let's start talking about one in a hundred thousand or one in a million. It's those people that are really coming down. It's those people that are colluding. Uh, with one another against the best interests of humanity. And people have to get that. I agree 100. Listen, we only have a few minutes left on this side before we have to go over to the next side. So I don't want to get into anything heavy that you're not going to be able to fully flesh out. Mm -hmm. Right. So let's use this time. Tell everybody where they can find you, what you're doing, new pro uh, projects, whatever you got going on. 
Yeah, man. Um, so right now, I am straight up only YouTube. I, I simulcast also on Twitter. It's at Jason Burmas, B-E-R-M-A-S on Twitter. Give me a follow there if you can't find me over on YouTube or you don't use it. But YouTube's where it's at. And I know there's a ton of demonetization. Yes, every single one of my videos gets demonetized. It goes up for manual review. But I want to stay on the platform because I'm not preaching hate. I'm not lying to people. I'm not taking a side. And I got nothing but love in my heart. I really want people to look at this information and decide for themselves. I'm doing things not only on Epstein. I'm at the forefront of the Nexium cult, Bilderberg, Bohemian Grove, transhumanism, biometrics, human microchipping, and more. And like I said, we're doing this three to seven times a day for free. Please sub, share it on social media, ring that bell for notifications. We do everything live. So you can also get in the chat room. And if you can support me, I'm running a GoFundMe uh, of $5,000 a month. This gives me sixty grand a year to play with. i got to pay 20 of that, at least in taxes. And it allows me to you know, continue to do this, hopefully, seven days a week. You know what I like about you is that you're fully transparent about it. 100%. You're just putting it all out there. Props to you for that. Any plans for something bigger or, or this is what the plan is? You just want to work off of YouTube. <sighs> Well, you know what? I, I mean, obviously, I love doing documentaries. And when I was working for uh, WRC, there was a couple mini docs I did. Um, you know, for instance, in, in the wake of the Par Parkland shooting, some of the big red flags and contradictions. Uh, did another one on those little terrorist camps. Did another one on Nexium. And those are great. But the thing is that that takes a lot of time in production. You know, I, I, I went to school for graphic design. Uh, I do video production. But with this uh, and this tool, you know, I use XSplit. And I'm able to really run my own broadcast. I want to expand. You know, I'd love to be doing two hours of radio on terrestrial radio or maybe XM or Sirius. But they have to let me uh, broadcast it live in pieces on YouTube as well. So if I could do, you know, terrestrial radio, maybe start doing that for two hours a day, take phone calls on top of just doing the interviews and whatever, and then do it sometime in the morning because I'd like to get up and get it done. Uh, you know, from eight to ten. I, hey, you got you got to get get on that grind, or you're never gonna do it. That's how I'm able to do this stuff. You know, I had a couple videos out today before like ten thirty in the morning, and uh, get it done. And then I have eight videos done in the day, and then the rest of the day to play with whatever other videos or topics or interviews, podcast style I want to do. You know, it's a great time uh, to be able to produce your own content as long as you don't get totally and completely banned by the tech giants. And that is an issue I talk about. You know, but uh, I'm reaching out to them because guess what? The tech giants, they still have a lot of people like you and me working for them. 